Hello, my name is RD and we are going to solve this problem here. The question is solve for V1 in the circuit of figure 3.55 using nodal analysis. So the keyword here is using nodal analysis. Okay, let's break it down into step by step. So how to do nodal analysis? Nodal analysis. Okay, the first step that we need to do is to label the nodes label all the nodes and also extract additional information from the circuit okay so here let's set our bottommost node here as our reference node or some some referring this into a ground node and what does ground node or reference node mean that means that the voltage in this node is set to be zero so v here is equal to zero good and now we have this node here right but then this node here is v1 from the ground right because v1 is between this node and this node so we will have v1 here okay then what can we do from here this node here this is 10 volt from the ground. So this one will be 0. So this here must be 10. Because the difference between positive terminal and negative terminal has to be 10. So this has to be 10 here. And by using similar logic, this node here has to be 20 volt from the ground. So we have 20 here because this one is 0 and this one is 20. And that means that the difference between the positive terminal and negative terminal is 24. And we have done the step number one. And then the second one will be assume the direction of the current. Assume the current's direction. Okay. What I usually do is just to put the horizontal component here has uh, goes to the right like this, like this one 10 ohm. It is horizontal, so I put to the right. And as on this 5 ohm resistor, I also put it to the right. And for the vertical component, I usually going to the ground. So we have this one here going down. And then this, it is a horizontal component, so I usually use goes to the right. But you can use the opposite direction as long as you are consistent during the solving of the problem. You will get the same result. Good. And now we need the third step here, which is do KCL, right? Do KCL for each node. Okay, we only have one essential node here, which is V1 here. So we need to do KCL at node V1. Okay, what does KCL say? KCL said that the sum of the current that goes in will equal to the sum of the current that goes out. Good. And now let's see here, there are two currents that goes in, right? This one and that one here. Let's see this one here, but we do not know the value of the current yet. We have to calculate that. We have the voltage here, 10 and V1. So how to write that? We will have 10, 10 is the node where the current came from. And then V1 is the node where the current goes to. So 10 is where it's come from, and then V1 is where the current goes to. And then because this is voltage, but we need current, we need to divide it by the resistance between them. So I will have 10 there. Okay. And then I also have similar things for this 5 ohm here. So we will have 10, where the current came from, and then minus V1, where the current goes. So we'll have V1, and then divide it by the resistance between them because 10 and V1 is voltage we need current so we divide it by the resistance between them okay good now 
we have done all the currents that goes in now let's do all the current that goes out so the current that goes out is this one and that one for this one we have p1 p1 is where the current came from and then minus this one here 20 20 is where the current goes again because p1 and 20 is voltage but we need current we divide by the resistance between them so i will have four here okay but i think i need to move this slightly to the left because i need some space because we still have one more current that goes out which is this one here and we will have p1 here as the current where it came from and then it goes to the ground so i will have minus zero here and then we will divide it by the resistance between them which is 10 ohm good okay now what can we do from here i think we can multiply both sides by 10 oh i think i made a mistake so instead multiplying by 10 i think we will multiply it by 20 so we can also cancel the 4 here okay 10 and 20 will cancel into 2 so we'll have 20 minus 2 v1 okay and then this one 5 and 20 will cancel into 4 so we'll have 40 and then minus 4 v1 good and then we have the equal sign 4 and 20 will cancel into 5 so we will have 5 v1 and then minus 20 and then 10 and 20 will cancel into 2 so we'll have 2 v1 good now what can we get from here 20 plus 40 that will be 60 and then we will have minus 6 v1 okay and then that will equal to i think we will have 7 here 5 plus 2 that will be 7 v1 and then minus 20 good now let's move to let's move things around so we'll have 60 plus 20 is equal to 7 plus 6 that will be 13 v1 okay that means that 13 v1 is equal to 80 so we will have v1 p1 is equal to 80 divided by 13 and what is the final value of p1 i think we need calculator for that so we will have 80 80 divided by 13 and that will be 6.15 okay we'll have 6.15 and the unit will be in volt here and this is the final answer for this question because that the question is asking us for p1 and we got p1 here okay hopefully i did not make any mistakes in my calculation thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye